Hello and welcome to today's short lecture. We have a little bit of new information from Lantos. But first, I want to talk about the handouts that you've received for the first and the second cycles of knowledge. Many of you find these handouts to be easy ways to go through the seeds in the order that you're supposed to go through them in the sequence so that you can receive the proper outcome. But there is another possible way that you can do this, and that is using your leaves of Genesis. So if you received the Moon Wings and Leaves box set, then you received your leaves of Genesis, and each leaf has information about a specific seed of creation. So if you wanted to be able to set up your leaves in the specific sequence, for example, the rose, uh, the rose ring sequence that we learned on Sunday, you could set up your leaves to be in that proper sequence. And then instead of having to use the handout, you would simply use your leaves. So the first leaf would be seed number one, and it tells you the seed phrase, source of light. Then the second seed for you would actually be seed 41, and it tells you the seed phrase, 10,000 drums. And then the third seed for you would be seed 81, flying seed, therefore intent. And it would go through the seeds in the proper sequence. You, of course, would have to set up the leaves that way. But this is another possible way for you, to, for you to be able to use your leaves. Of course, there are lots of instructions that Lantos has given us over the past year about using the leaves with the flying seed and in treatments. But this is another way that you could use it. Now, some of the questions that Cindy asked Lantos uh, have, are very practical ones. But one that is very practical with a very interesting answer was when we were going to receive the information for the course on the 22nd, the third cycle of knowledge. The reason that I had Cindy ask this question is because I have to give the lecture from the Western Gate in Los Angeles. That means that a lot more planning has to go in to the filming and the production of that particular lecture. So I was wondering if we were going to get a little bit of advance notice on the information for that lecture. Sometimes we receive the information only an hour or two before the lecture. Sometimes it's a day before the lecture. So I was wondering when that would happen, and Cindy asked Lantos. Here was his response. The knowledge will come at the proper time. All knowledge arrives at the proper time. Great knowledge arrives at the time destined by the great cosmic forces. Each installment of the supreme knowledge of the holy season arrives according to supreme sequence. So, that's a great answer. It lets us know that knowledge comes when the time is right. And specifically, great knowledge comes when the great cosmic forces want it to come. So we'll receive this knowledge whenever we receive it. All I know for sure is that I will have it in time to give it to you on December 22nd. Then, Cindy asked a question that many of you have asked us. What happens if you are doing a technique to enliven all 81 seeds, whether it is the return to the source technique, the emerge from the source technique, whether it is the initiating the way of the elements, elemental sequence technique, whether it is the rose ring sequence technique. If you're doing a technique to enliven all 81 seeds, what happens if you get interrupted? Because it can take a while to enliven all 81 seeds. What happens if you get a phone call or someone's at the door or your spouse or children come in and interrupt you? What do you do? We, <clears throat> we, Cindy asked Lantos this, and he said, the sequence will continue even following a pause. The pause may occur, and then we continue along the sequence. So that means that even if you have to take a break from the technique, just start back up where you left off, and the sequence will continue. Then Cindy asked, what if someone forgets where they are in the process? He said, it may happen, then we continue. So all that means is if you forget 
which seed you were supposed to be enlivening. Let's say you're going on the, you're doing the return to the source technique, 81 down to seed one, and you are at seed 60, maybe. You can't remember if you enliven seed 61 or if you're supposed to be enlivening 61. It's okay, just go ahead and enliven seed 61. It'll be fine. And same thing if you can't remember how many times you have spun the way for that particular seed. It may be that you have spun the way twice, but you think maybe it was three times and you can't remember. Spin it again, and that'll be fine. Then, Cindy asked, when you're doing a technique to enliven all 81 seeds, is there a specific time that we should allow for each seed or each spin of the way? And the reason this was asked is because on November 20th, when Lantos wanted all of us to be doing the return to the source technique. He wanted all of us doing it at the exact same time. And he gave a very specific instruction, 15 seconds for each spin of the way. Allow 15 seconds. And that means 45 seconds for each seed because you spin the way three times for each seed. So the question that Cindy asked is, do we need to do that as our proper timing for all of these techniques? 15 seconds for each spin of the way, or can we do it more rapidly? His answer was, it may vary. Yes, the timing may vary. We go according to personal experience. At times, it may be possible that one experiences greater energy, greater warmth from a rapid sequence. It may also be the experience that one enjoys the blessings of the radiant, luminous qualities of fullness within the silent space between each seed. It may be accomplished in either process. Fullness is realized through the thrice-spun process of initiation, seed by seed, along the prescribed sequence. Fullness emerges. So it doesn't matter how rapidly you spin the way and go through each seed or how slow you, slowly you do it. If you've grown fond of spinning 15 seconds for each spin of the way, do that. If you like spending less time doing the technique, being able to do it in 20 minutes instead of 60 minutes, then do the rapid sequence. Either way, it's great to know that Lantos even pointed out the different experiences that you might have that on the rapid sequence, sequence you, could have, you could experience greater energy and greater warmth. But on the slower sequence, you may, uh, he said, it may be the experience that one enjoys the blessings of the radiant, luminous qualities of fullness within the silent space between each seed. So both have great qualities associated with them. But the important part was how he ended. Fullness is realized through the thrice-spun process of initiation, seed by seed, along the prescribed sequence. Fullness emerges. So what that means is whether you do it quickly, whether you do it slowly, the only things that matter are that you spin the way three times for each seed and that you use the proper sequence. Doing those two things means that you will receive the desired result. You will achieve the desired result. Okay, a couple of quick notes before we finish today's lecture. Uh, the Flying Seed website was down for a few days. It is now back up, and the uh, calendar that goes well into the future telling you the daily seed as well as the inception seeds, that is updated so that you can now go into the future and figure out uh, if someone's inception seed is going to be uh, July 1st of next year, what will their inception seed be? So now that website is back up with the updated calendar. Also, we're going to be doing another Genesis Acceleration program at the Western Gate in California, in Los Angeles, and that's going to be in January. We're pretty sure it's going to be January 18th and 19th. Now, these courses have a limited number of spaces so if you are interested in going, you should let our office know as soon as possible so that we can reserve a space for you. Again, that should be January 18th and 19th 
at the Western Gate in Los Angeles, but I'll let you know for sure in the next week. Okay, everyone, have a great rest of your week. I'll speak with you again on Sunday.